we are joined today by Mr. Husband. He hasn't been in a video in a while, and I, I thought I'd stick him back there. Good morning, Reptilians. Welcome, welcome back to my channel. So this week we are talking all about reptile supplements. So really quick, before we even get started on anything, I wanted to say that this is not going to be a guide for any specific animal. We are only talking about what the different supplements are and what they're used for, how to use them, when, when to use them, all of that. There's a lot of confusion about things like vitamin D3 and calcium to phosphorus ratios, things like that and I recently had a question about whether or not I had a video on this and I realized that I don't and just to be completely honest with you guys a lot of this stuff I didn't know I sat down and researched for about three straight days to put all this information together into this guide and I myself learned a lot like I always say I'm not an expert I just research a lot and this was very helpful for me as well so thank you guys so much for your awesome video suggestions this video is sponsored by iHeartGeck who are absolutely wonderful. So make sure to stay until the end of this video to find out how you can get a free feeding ledge with the purchase of a conversion kit on their website. So let's get started. First of all, let's talk about why reptiles need supplements. You may be thinking in the wild, they're not being supplemented calcium and things like that. And that is very true. But a couple of things here. Number one, the vast majority of reptiles live much longer in captivity than they do in the wild. People have spent a very long time perfecting supplements for reptiles to make sure that they are getting all of the vitamins and minerals, calcium and stuff that they need in order to be healthy. That's a big thing. It's just supplementing what they are already getting in order to make sure that they are as healthy as they possibly can be. Just like you and I might take multivitamins or vitamin D or whatever to make sure that we are healthy. There are a lot of different brands and different forms of supplements out there. A lot of things, especially things like sprays and salad dressings, put a lot of unnecessary ingredients into them, like just straight table sugar or salt. Make sure that you are reading the ingredients on the back. First of all, let's quickly talk about calcium just as a whole. Calcium is super important for reptiles. It is what is building up their strong bones and it's going to help to prevent metabolic bone disease. Now, the big thing about calcium is that calcium needs to be given in a two to one ratio with phosphorus. Phosphorus is something that is found in feeder insects, but phosphorus has to have calcium in order to break down correctly. So if they are getting one part phosphorus, Phosphorus, they have to have two parts calcium in order to break that down correctly and also still provide them with an adequate amount of calcium to keep those bones healthy, if that makes sense. What this comes down to is that feeder insects have phosphorus. Some calcium powders have phosphorus. So it is very important that you check the bottle of calcium to make sure that it has no phosphorus or a super low amount of phosphorus in order to keep your reptile healthy and to make sure that they don't develop something like metabolic bone disease. And other than just metabolic bone disease, calcium is super, super important for gravid reptiles or reptiles that have just laid eggs because a lot of calcium is pulled when making and laying those eggs. So let's get into calcium with D3. So what is D3? Vitamin D3 is created when bodies are exposed to sunlight and it plays another very important role in maintaining a healthy skeletal structure, primarily calcium with D3 is used for reptiles that do not have UV lighting. UV lighting is lighting that is replicating the sun and allow their bodies to create vitamin D3. If your animal does not have a UVB light, then usually they are going to need calcium with D3. Something that I did not know, the highest concentration of vitamin D3 is found in RepCal's calcium and it is crazy high. It contains 10 times more D3 than the next highest D3 contents in a calcium, which is flukers. In general, that is way too much. An interesting fact that I found out, did not know. But like I said, too much D3 is possible. It is 
pretty rare to overdose a reptile on D3, but it is possible. So things like leopard geckos, for example, my leopard geckos do have UV lighting. UV lighting can never fully mimic the sun because it is a human made manufactured thing. So while I don't always dust my insects with them with calcium with D3, I do like to throw it in a couple times a month just to make sure. But then when you start giving a leopard gecko UVB lighting and you are dusting their food with D3 every single day and you are using things like RepCal that have an insane amount of vitamin D3, that's when you start to risk vitamin D3 overdoses. Calcium without D3. So this is primarily used for animals that have access to UV lighting, especially if you have an outdoor animal, like people keep iguanas outside, they would use calcium without D3 because they are directly exposed to the sun. This is just pure calcium. This is wonderful for putting in leopard geckos tanks because they will lick it up and they are just getting pure calcium if they need it. So yeah, just like we were talking about before, if you have a UV light on your tank, then you would use the calcium without the D3 for a huge majority of their feedings. And the next one is multivitamins. Multivitamins are just like humans take vitamins to supplement what we eat. It's the same for reptiles. So they're going to get most of their vitamins from the food that they eat. And that is why usually we are only dusting reptile food with multivitamins like once a week, once every other week. Multivitamin powder is just what it sounds like. It is a powder that has a multitude of vitamins inside of it. And yeah, just another thing to help keep your animal healthy. So other than those supplement powders, let's talk about the next most important thing to make sure that your animals are getting the amount of vitamins and minerals that they need. And that is gut loading insects. Now, obviously this isn't going to apply to vegetarian reptiles, but in reptiles that need bugs, gut loading is incredibly important. I have a couple different videos on this, but basically what gut loading is, is feeding your feeders in preparation for them being eaten. The most common things to feed your feeders is going to be things like fresh fruits and vegetables and there are also a wide variety of commercially made feeds for those feeders as well. My absolute favorite thing to use is the Fluker's Calcium Feed which is a high calcium food. You just pour it in a little cup and you stick it in there and they eat it and that's it. They're done. There's also a very popular option by Rapashi called Bug Burger. You actually microwave water and mix powder into it and it expands and the bugs eat that. I also love using pellet food that's meant for lizards for gut load. The bugs love those. And because that's made for things like bearded dragons, those pellets have a lot of protein and a lot of vitamins in them already. And it just works really nicely as a feeder for them. But whatever you decide to feed your feeders, make sure that you are feeding them. Otherwise, you are basically just feeding empty shell of bugs that has no nutritional value. So make sure that you are gut loading. It's super, super, super important, just as important as dusting them. Next up, we're going to talk about calcium and vitamin sprays. Now, this isn't normally something that I would just talk about because they're honestly not great, but since they are very widely available, I thought that I would quickly go over them. They are marketed as being super easy. You just spray it on and go. But the issue with these sprays is that number one, they are very watered down. The concentration of calcium and multivitamins in this is very low because it has to be watered down to be made into a spray. Also, they aren't as reliable as powder. So if you have a white calcium powder, you can see that that cricket is coated in calcium as opposed to a spray, which is dripping off of this animal as it's hopping around. So it's less concentrated, less reliable, and it's available at the same places the calcium and vitamin powders are. So I would highly advise to just go for the powders and just skip those sprays. Probiotics. Probiotics are just like human probiotics. They contain microorganisms that are going to benefit your animal's digestive tract. And a lot of times they are used in conjunction with antibiotics or any kind of medicine or used to stimulate a reptile's appetite. Most often this is talked about when we talk about bearded dragons and that's just because bearded dragons are parasite prone. So a lot of them at some point in their lives are put on anti-parasite medication and 
but that can upset your bearded dragon's tummy. Probiotics usually help them feel better pretty quickly. But this is something that you want to reserve for those specific scenarios and not use all day every day long term. But I personally think that they are super helpful. So when I first got Zaz, many of you guys know that she had parasites all the time and that's because the first veterinarian that she went to was not appropriately treating them. So she was treated for parasites for months and months at a time and probiotics did help her feel better. So I definitely think that they work and I would recommend them if you are in any kind of situation like that. If you are using probiotics, they are super easy to use. You can sprinkle them on top of food if your animal's eating. You can mix them with water and give them in a dropper. You can mix them with slurries, anything like that, it works. Oxbow supplements. So these are things like critical care and carnivore care. These are things meant to supplement a very sick animal's diet. With Zaz, she had surgery due to egg binding, due to a very prolonged having parasites and them not being treated appropriately. She wouldn't eat for months. The options are to make homemade slurries, which consists of grinding up bugs and vegetables in a blender, which at the time made me very uncomfortable, or Things like these Oxbow supplements are super helpful. They are basically everything that those animals need. They also stimulate weight gain. They are mixed with water and given in a syringe so your animal is staying hydrated. This is especially helpful too when you look at things like babies. Baby animals need nutrition to grow. When you aren't feeding a baby reptile what it's supposed to be eating or how much it's supposed to be eating, that's when they can get even sicker. They can be forever stunted in their growth. They can develop things like metabolic bone disease and they can even die. So during those times you have to give your animal something and these Oxbow supplements are wonderful for that. So I wanted to make sure to include that in here because it is super important and I 1000% feel like it is necessary sometimes and it works. Last one on the list because it does claim to be a supplement is calcium sand. You guys know my stance on calcium sand is no, but I thought I'd quickly talk about it. Calcium sand is sand that is claimed to be good for reptiles because it contains calcium carbonate. So depending on the kind of calcium sand you get, some are sands that are mixed with calcium carbonate and some are 100% pure calcium carbonate. The reason that this is so bad is number one, one, the pure calcium carbonate. This is what Tums are made out of. It is a basic substance used to neutralize acid in order to prevent heartburn. If you read the label of Tums, which again is calcium carbonate, the big points that it says is not to take too much and that it may cause constipation. Those things are not good for a reptile. So when you look at a reptile that is constantly taking in this calcium carbonate, they they are neutralizing their stomach acid and over a long period of time they may stop being able to digest their food as well as they could which could lead to impaction. You also have sands that have added calcium which is your animal going around licking up sand to take in calcium or just licking up sand to lick sand. That is all going to go into their bodies and form an undigestible ball and that causes impaction. <laughs> so calcium sand, very dangerous. Please don't use it. And I think that is all I have. Hopefully I answered any questions about supplements and what they are used for. Like I said, this video super helped me out when I was researching all of it because I learned some things that I didn't know. That is it. Like I said at the beginning of this video, this video is sponsored by iHeartGeckos. iHeartGeckos is such a wonderful company that I have personally been using for years, even before they decided to sponsor me. They make conversion kits that are so awesome. It allows you to take an old tank that you may have laying around and stick that conversion kit in, silicone it in, and you now have a standing vertical tank for any arboreal animal. They are super easy to install and they are a lot cheaper than going out and trying to buy an exoterra tank or those sorts of front opening tanks. It just allows you to use what you have and make a beautiful tank. If you are interested in buying one of these conversion kits, make sure to check out iHeartGeckos.com and use my code L's Reptiles to get a free feeding ledge with the purchase of one of those conversion kits. What's better than a free feeding ledge when you're setting up for your new little arboreal reptile? Thank you so much to iHeartGeckos for sponsoring this video. 
As always, if you're not already, please feel free to follow me on my other socials and like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications every single time I put out a new video, which is every Sunday. This week's Instagram shout out goes to the Dragon King 364. Follow me on Instagram and going through and liking a whole bunch of stuff. Thank you so much. You are the bee's knees. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye. Not everything can be getting, getting, and yeah. If your animal, actually, we'll put it at the end. Okay. Sense that is used to neuralize, neutralize, especially formulated. Things like, like gecko food, skink food.